Hey guys, Alex from Athletics back again with uh, session number two of Athletics Mythbusters. Today we are talking about one of the most common pieces of pushback that we get when we talk to people about trying what we do. Okay? It is that I want to lose weight, that's my primary goal. I don't want to lift weight because that is my goal. All right. I die a little bit inside every time that we hear this because there's just so much misinformation in the fitness industry about what it takes. All right, so to dispel this myth, we're going to talk about what actually facilitates weight loss or fat loss in particular, okay? So now, we're not trying to make this a diet argument because at, a, at, a, at Athletics, we are diet agnostic. We do not advocate for any specific one diet. We believe that um, if you have a way of dieting that fits your lifestyle and works for you, and succeeds in doing what is necessary to help you lose weight, then we support that, okay? But the bottom line is that no matter what you've been told, any diet that's successful succeeds in helping you uh, intake fewer calories than what you are burning. That is the way to lose weight. And no matter what you do, whether you go keto and you exclude carbohydrates, um, you do high carb and you exclude fat, um, you do intermittent fasting so that you only eat at certain times of the day, all of these diets are not magic, they succeed by limiting the amount of calories that you're taking in and ensure that you are burning more than you're taking in, okay? So let's start there. From there, let's talk specifically about what you do to burn calories, okay? The caloric output. What are you doing to make sure that you are burning more than you're taking in? So diet aside, okay? There are three elements that go into burning calories, okay? That part of the equation. They are your BMR. All right, that's your basal metabolic rate. It's a jargony way of saying, how many calories do you burn doing absolutely nothing? If you stayed in bed all day, this is the number of calories you would burn. The second element is NEAT, which is non-exercise related activity thermogenesis. Okay, that again is just a jargony way of saying all the stuff that you do that is not just like keeping the lights on and exercise, that's where that fits in. So it's everything from walking your dog in the morning to uh, sitting at your computer typing to fidgeting everything that you do that's not exercise and not just like cellular function in the body is neat and then last the last component to caloric burn is exercise i wrote it so small because that is how insignificant it is in influencing overall caloric burn so over here we've got a little uh, chart that i sort of made up and it's going to show us how each of these elements plays into overall calorie burn if the margins here are your overall uh, calories burned for the day, that's everything together, all three of these elements. The blocks are how much each contribute to overall caloric burn. Now, I'll say this with the caveat that this is different for everybody, okay? If you had an Olympic athlete that trains five hours a day, then yeah, their exercise-related activity is going to be a much larger portion of their caloric burn than this, all right? Um, same thing with their non-exercise related activity because they're usually pretty active outside of their sport as well. So this is going to be much larger. So if you, this would, if you get bigger for that athlete, this would be a much smaller proportion of that. Okay? But for most folks who maybe have an hour to work out during the day and lead a more or less like even a semi-active lifestyle or, or have a sedentary job, this is the breakdown for most of them. The, the biggest part of your caloric burn during the day is your metabolic rate. Just literally keeping the lights on, making sure that your body is doing the things that it needs to do to stay alive. The second largest piece, the cl a close second, is your needs. All of the stuff that you're doing outside. It's, it's me gesturing to you right now. It's me moving my lips and making noise. It's neat, okay? And then lastly, the smallest piece is exercise, okay? A very, very small piece of the equation, all right? So do we really want to get into the minutia of trying to pick an exercise format that burns more calories than another. That shouldn't even be what we consider when we talk about what to do for exercise because it's not even a large piece of the puzzle, all right? If we're only working out for an hour, all right, I'll attach a uh, Harvard Medical Review piece on this, but what they found is that even high intensity exercise, which is supposedly the best thing for burning calories, has a negligible effect on caloric burn during the session, okay? And yes, there's an argument that it raises metabolic rate after the session, but even that is overstated, okay? So basically what happens is if, if you decide to do high intensity interval training, you can, you can hit your face off for an hour long, you are only going to get a modest benefit above and beyond simple strength training, okay? 
the tune of even in a large person, maybe 100 to 150 calories in that hour. That's the sad part about it. Okay, that's literally one snack a day. Okay, at athletics, we choose to take the stance of we don't care about calories burned in exercise. That is not why we're here. Okay, so back to the myth that we're trying to bust is can I still lose weight basically if I'm strength training? Absolutely, because we don't care about calorie burn during exercise. What we're gonna do is use diet to make sure that we are burning more calories than we are taking in. And we're gonna rely on a little bit extra activity outside of the, um, outside of the gym to increase our meat. Our metabolic rate kinda is what it is. It's a function of uh, our body composition and overall our, our size, our gender, some factors like that. Um, and then exercise, we don't really care about how we burn calories there, right? We're gonna use exercise or training as we view it as a means to improve function, which is what, what strength training is all about, okay? We're trying to improve bone density. We're trying to improve joint integrity. We're trying to improve the way that you move. We're trying to improve mobility. We're improving strength. We're improving all these things that are going to improve your life above and beyond burning an extra 150 calories in an hour. Okay. So hopefully you guys get the message today. You do not need to do what conventional wisdom tells you you need to do to try and lose weight. It's a function of your diet. It's a function of uh, your body composition. All those factors go into it. Your activity outside of exercise. But it is not a hugely a function of what you do when you are exercising. So hopefully that's clear, guys. Um, again, hit me up with any questions. I'm not attacking your diet. I'm just saying this is what the evidence shows us. All right? Come with